Hello everyone. You're welcome to today's edition. Uh, today I want to talk about the common mistakes that people do when they go to do maintenance. Most people will just uh, remove a, a sensor and put a new sensor without checking what was actually was actually wrong with the old sensor. Or people that go and uh, remove um, relays and put new relays without testing the coil of the old relay to see where the problem is actually coming from. I've just been on a job. I've just uh, replaced. Uh, I've just been told that uh, one of these is bad. This is a, a level switch. It's a sensor. It's a, a vibrating sensor. What it does is that it monitors the level of, of, um, of liquid in a tank. And when the level is reached, it will, it will give signal to give a uh, give signal to the to the PLC and the, and then the, the pump will start and then it will drain and when the level has dropped depending on how it is programmed when the level has dropped or when at so a certain amount of time has passed it will it will become active again and be waiting waiting to uh, ready to to turn on again so you can you can program you can uh, connect it to be uh, to be switching, to be to, for, because once it's once it's uh, connected, there, there's a red light that flashes here, and when it's full, you can either make it to uh, to activate when it's full or to activate when it's empty. But when it's, when it when it when it activates is when it's uh, the, the red light stays. So, but when it's idle, when it's waiting, it's flashing. So I've just been told that uh, one of the tanks was not draining and the pump and the pump was uh, overflowing. The tank was overflowing. So I've just been there, uh, and uh, I found out that uh, instead of changing the pump, instead of changing the, the, the sensor, because that's what most people would do, but this sensor cost uh, 131 pounds. Uh, that's what it cost today on uh, plus VAT. It's 131 pound plus VAT, that's what it costs on IRS today. But... Um, it's not a lot of money, but if you can uh, uh, make the sensor work for you for a, a little longer, that will be all right. So this sensor has a plug. So the plug, uh, the plug is um, has um, three connectors and uh, and one for earth. So and also it comes with instruction of how to connect it. it. Comes with instruction. So what I did, the first thing I did was to look at the cable where it was connected, and I found out that the cable was all twisted because. It looks like when they remove it for maintenance, they just twist. They instead of unplugging the instead of unplugging the sensor, instead of unplugging the sensor, the from here, what they do is that they uh, twist it on it. So I'll just show you how it was connected, how the the sensor should be connected, and then I'll show you how I was able to troubleshoot it. So actually, the sensor goes in like goes in like this. Um, how does it go in again? Mm, I think this it goes in like this. So that's how it's plugged in. It's pl it should be plugged in. So that's how it was plugged in with this uh, this one being here. Well, people, instead of unplugging it when they remove it, because there's a, there's a thread here, there's a threaded uh, part of here where you have to screw it on to the, to the tank. It goes in like this to the tank. But people just don't disconnect it. They just do that. And then this makes the cables to twist. And this easily damages the cable. So when you're going to troubleshoot these kind of things, when you have a problem and you've been called to, to do the, uh, a sensor, First of all, what you have to look at is the look at the cable. Look at the cable. Most of the time, you don't have to change the sensor. It's, it's the cable that is faulty. So what, I, what I've done is I, I've just uh, replaced the... Um, this, this is gunky as well. I've replaced the sensor. I replaced the, the, the connector. And uh, I've replaced the cable as well because the cable was very twisted. So I replaced it. And then it, it was plugged as well. It was plugged to this socket. And uh, it's a waterproof socket. So it was plugged to this one. So I replaced this part of it as well. If you can look at it, you see that it's also not looking too good. So I've just replaced the two plugs. 
and now the sensor is working perfectly. So before you replace the sensor, first of all, look at the cable. Replace the cable if the cable is not in good condition. And replace the connectors. Once you've got the connectors and the cable replaced, test it. If, it does, if it's not working right, then you can replace the sensor. That will help you to save some money. Well, thank you for listening and uh, see you on the next one.